Hey, hey, hey! My name's Helianth is Cryptid, or Nephilim if you'd prefer. Welcome to my cosy corner of the internet. This is the third chapter of Daichi Samura's Guide to Belly Surviving College Sophomore Year Edition, written by Dark Rain 2610 on AO3. The summary of this chapter is as follows. Bokuto gets to awkwardly listen, Kuro whines to Kenma, and Suga wrecks some homophobes. This fanfiction includes topics that may be triggering to some viewers. If you're likely to be affected by any of the following, implied sexual content, drinking, homophobia, and internalized homophobia, then please consider listening to another one of my videos, such as the Adro series, which is written by XX Cypress Minerva XX. Now I implore you to sit back and relax whilst I read to you. Chapter 3. Bokuto's Perspective Bokuto watched as Kuro pulled out his phone and dialed a number quickly, taking shallow breaths that Bo was sure wasn't actually getting anything into his lungs. Awkwardly sitting there, Bokuto didn't know what he should do. In fact, Bogoto was just confused about what had just happened in general. After Daichi left the apartment to cool off, Oikawa followed him pretty quickly, leaving Bo with Kuro, who didn't seem like he was faring very well. Kenma, I'm dropping out of college. I figured you would want to know before I disappeared off the face of the planet. Bogoto looked at Kuro with confusion, but the other man just turned away from him. No, I'm not overreacting. He's living with me, Ken, in the same house! Kuro sunk lower in the kitchen chair, clearly not liking what this Kenma had told him. I mean, I know I gave him an unfair rating, but I didn't think he'd end up here. I don't even know why I tried. You're too sensible all the time. No wonder you and Akashi get along so well. Bogoto looked up as he tried to match the name to the face. No, I'll come by later. Have fun with Akashi, okay? Why do I know that name? Kuro looked back at Bokuto with a weak smile, which he tried to return as the bedhead hung up the phone. Bokuto scratched the back of his neck while Kuro laid his head on the table. I'm not gonna press you to talk since we've only been best bros for about 30 minutes. Bokuto uneasily jokes but grows more confident when he gets a soft snort from Kuro as he continued. But I'm here if you wanna. Kuro lifted his head to smile, but Bogoto watched as his eyes widened with the noise of the front door opening. Bogoto watched Daichi visibly flinch as he felt both eyes fall on him, but continued to the kitchen area, where he pulled up a chair across from Kuro and plopped down. We should probably talk, Daichi said unreasonably calm into the overwhelmingly suffocating kitchen. Even Bokuto was having a hard time breathing for some reason, and he didn't even know what was going on. Kuro stared at Daichi as he shot him an almost bored look that Bokuto was sure Daichi could see through. What could we possibly need to talk about, Saomura? I'm perfectly comfortable with this arrangement, are you not? Kuro snarled when Daichi rolled his eyes as he continued. How juvenile of you, don't you think? The person acting like a hormonal teenage boy isn't me, Kuro. I'm trying to work out the best course of action we can take moving forward. Kuro abruptly stood up, the cheap chair screeching as it dragged across the tile. I'm perfectly fine. If you still feel weird with me, then maybe we should talk about it, but I assumed we were over all those feelings. Kuro smiled, teeth bared as Bogoto watched Daichi's hands move into fists. Unless you aren't over it. Daichi stood up quickly, both of the men staring daggers at each other. Of course I'm over it. I guess it was pretty silly of me to be worried about it since we were such good friends before, right? Daichi spit out, but was wearing an almost too friendly smile, as Bokuto wished he had recorded the fight for Suki. He was always into this kind of petty shit. Kuro picked at his cuticles, rolling back on his heels as he looked down at Daichi with a smirk. Such good friends! So good of friends that none of the other stuff mattered, right? 
Obito looked at Kuro, whose eyes looked like they didn't believe a word of what he was just saying. Almost pained, but decided once again to stay quiet. I don't get why people just don't say what they mean. Daichi's eyes narrowed as Bokuto saw him gulp and forced his hands to unclench. I didn't realise how easy it was for you. It's nice to know it didn't mean anything. Since we're such good friends. You wouldn't mind if us roommates went to the bar together on Friday. I would love to catch up on all the fun and cool things you did during break that didn't involve me. Koro looked like he swallowed something rotten as he finally looked Daichi in the eye. Daichi continued to look Kuro in the eye as he fished his phone out of his pocket. Look, Dai, I didn't mean it like that. It's Daichi! If you forgot. Was that a yes, Koro? Oikawa wants to know, since the whole thing is about the election. Daichi was now looking at his phone, other hand in his coat. Koro stepped back as another moment of silence passed through the apartment. Daichi rose an eyebrow while he glanced up probably as a challenge, and Koro scowled at him. Yes, I'd love to. Just like old times, right? Koro gritted out, a pained smile painted on his face. Daichi smirked at him as he put his phone back into his pocket and turned to go down to his room. Just like old times. Bokuto heard the door click closed as... Koro groaned, running his fingers through his hair. Sorry, Bo, you really didn't need to hear all that. Bokuto shrugged as Kuro fumbled with his keys. I'm going to run to my friend Kenma's apartment for a second. Want me to pick up food on my way back? Bokuto shook his head. I'm good, man. You have fun, though. Kuro nodded as he walked out of the apartment. Man, that was not what I wanted to see on my first day back. At least the drama wasn't happening to him. The little voice inside his head that sounded a bit like Suki whispered as Bogoto sat in the now quiet apartment. The quiet didn't last too long, though, as the door ripped open, revealing a dishevelled, red-faced Oikawa rushing in. Bogoto stifled a laugh as Oikawa looked around the empty front room before coming to sit down by him. So, what did I miss? Koro's perspective. Koro didn't knock when he tried to enter Kenma's two-person apartment, and was sourly disappointed that the door didn't open when he tried to force it. Kenma! You okay? You never lock the door! Koro loudly called as the door flung open, showing a scowling Kenma. Koro! You shouldn't just announce that to the whole building! Get in here! Lightly pulling on his wrist, Koro followed behind Kenma while cringing about his outburst. Right, not my place. To be fair, Koro was used to taking care of Kenma, and letting go was appearing harder than he originally thought. Akashi peeked his head around the corner of the kitchen as Koro sat down on their couch, trying to fold up on himself. No, I don't want any tea, thank you, Akashi. Koro said without looking up, as Akashi had just opened his mouth to ask. Kenma sent a pointed look at Koro, and the taller man shrunk further into the couch. We would both love some. Thank you, love. Kenma said, looking up to make eye contact with Akashi, who nodded as he disappeared into the kitchen again. Kenma looked at the now empty space with a small smile, but let it fall as he looked back at Koro. If you're going to camp out here for a second, you need to be nice to Akashi. Kuro groaned as he sat up straighter, frowning at himself. What am I doing? I'm a full-grown adult, and I like Akashi. They're good for each other. As if he had heard Kuro's thoughts, Kenma stopped glaring at Kuro and put a hand on his knee as he started up his switch. You already know what I'm going to say about your situation, so I'm guessing you didn't come here for my advice. Kenma said quietly as he started up Mario Kart. Koro didn't say anything, but reached for another controller. Silence fell in the room as the two of them played a course and a half, only filled with the noise of the game and the random swear words that fell from Koro's lips as Kenma beat him. Badly. Koro always appreciated the fact that silence wasn't frowned upon with Kenma. In fact, it was encouraged. Kenma wasn't going to make him talk unless he wanted to, which is exactly what he needed. 
Akashi walked in around later, putting a plate down with three cups of tea and some crackers in front of the two best friends. Thank you, Akashi. I apologize for my outburst earlier. Akashi smiled as he sat down in the armchair, taking his cup with him. It's fine, Kuro. Kenma has told me all about what stupid situation you got yourself into, Akashi said with a faintly amused look in his eyes, although Kuro didn't hear anything in his voice that sounded condescending. But I am curious about how you're planning on solving it. And there's the difference between the two men. With his best friend, Kuro never felt pressured to talk about things, but sometimes it led him to never talking about the problem. After Kenma had admitted to online dating and having a boyfriend, Kuro spent time talking with Akashi over the internet and becoming acquainted with him. After all, I had to know the guy that won my best friend's heart. But as he became friends with Akashi, Kuro found out that he was a very blunt guy, leading Kuro to tell more than he was ready to. Kuro cleared his throat and he took a sip of the tea in front of him, if only to stall longer. Kuro, are you stalling? Damn it, Akashi! Kenma was looking at his lap, but Kuro could tell through his bangs that he was smiling at the conversation. I don't actually know. What would you suggest I do, Akashi? Akashi looked back at him unamused as he took another sip of his tea. Stupid Akashi, making me talk. Who even has tea in college? Rich kids, that's who. Making me sound stupid. And that's like a five-year-old. Damn it, Kuro. Akashi put his cup down on the side table as he took a breath. Well, Kuro, he said, looking at Kenma for approval. It depends. If you like the other roommates and if they can make it tolerable for you, Kuro blinked, not expecting that answer. Another difference Kuro found is when Kenma will let him come up with his own solution, Akashi will help him brainstorm. Do I like my roommates? I do, Kuro said cautiously. They're cool. And it's not like Daichi and I didn't get along before all that shit. Akashi nodded, and Kenma looked up from his phone to nudge him. So I guess I overreacted? Kuro let out as he felt mild annoyance fill his veins. Of course these two already knew that. Kenma turned off his phone and placed it on the table with the crackers as he finally took his tea. And how do you get so smart? He said, softly teasing, as Kuro felt himself roll his eyes fondly and relaxed back into the sofa. Says the programmer that's dating a pre-med student. Kuro joked. Akashi sighed as he remembered some assignment that he was missing, even though it was only the first day. Knowing pre-med, he probably does. Are you guys going to any parties or bars for rush week? My roommate and his boyfriend fuck buddy thing are running for student body president, so I'm going to support them at the bar on Friday when they read off the results. Koro was scratching his head when he felt the idea come to him. You guys want to come? I can introduce you to my friends. Koro watched, biting down a laugh as both of them struggled to contain how much they hated that idea. Koro, I have no interest in meeting the people who are making your life hard on the first day of college. Kenma finally stated as Akashi nodded grimly. Besides, by the end of the week, we're probably going to have a bunch of homework anyway. Koro could feel Kenma's resolve start to melt away as he made the shorter look at him. Please, Kenma, just for the night, before you two get busy. Akashi sighed as he shook his head, knowing that Kuro had won this round when Kenma looked back at him, tilting his head as if to ask a question. We'll come, but as soon as we get tired, we're leaving. No arguing, got it? Akashi said with finality, as Kuro cheered. Got it, Kuro? Kuro smiled at the younger man, who gave him a slight smile back and looked down at his phone. Got it, Akashi, loud and clear. Koro put his feet on the table, earning a look from Akashi as he looked back down. 
Man, I can't wait for you guys to meet them. I mean, there's Daichi, which Kenro has heard about, but Oikawa is wild and Bogoto. Akashi's head shot up, letting out a small gasp as Kenma let out a small snort. Koro looked at both of them with confusion, as the two of them seemed to have a conversation without speaking. Okay, Koro finally said slowly, feeling left out of the loop. What am I missing? Kenma's eyes shifted to side-eye Akashi, as he spoke slowly, trying not to laugh. Akashi went to school with Bokuto, and he had a massive crush on him, before the guy hit him with his... Akashi jumped up from the armchair with amazing speed while grabbing Kuro and pulling him to his feet. Pushing Kuro towards the door, he talked over Kenma as the blonde started to laugh. Well, if you're feeling better, Kuro, I need peace and quiet to study, and Kenma doesn't know what he's talking about, and we'll see you on Friday. Getting Kuro out the door, Akashi quickly closes it, and Kuro hears the lock turn sharply, followed by a groan that he was sure he wasn't supposed to hear. Kuro smiled at the closed door as he turned around to walk home. Well, if all else fails, I still have these two dorks. Daichi's Perspective Two days later Sugawara Koshi, you are a dead man! Suga looked at him with disinterest and unbelief, like Daichi hadn't just yelled at him for five minutes straight for not giving him a proper warning. I know you were hanging out with Oikawa before I got to the apartment. Why didn't you just send a text? A little heads up? Suga smiled at him, while keeping his eyes level. What could I have possibly warned you about, Daichi, that you wouldn't have ran away from? Hypocrite, aren't you, Suga? Raising an eyebrow, Suga drank more from his impossibly empty cup, the straw not sucking up anything but air, making an annoying slurping noise. Suga knew Daichi hated. Face it, Daichi. You would have ran away from the room. Or worse, try and trade me rooms. And what's wrong with that? You would have been in the same room as Oikawa then. Daichi said defensively, deciding right then was not the time to bring up they could still very reasonably switch rooms. Suga laughed as he examined the iced coffee cup as if staring at it would produce more liquid. Yeah, and have Bobito and Kuro hate us for fucking all the time. Trust me, Daichi, it's better this way. Daichi groaned as he passed his half-drunken coffee to Suga, who gladly took it to drink. I don't know what to do. I tried to talk about being civil, but he's such a child. I honestly can't remember why I liked him. Suga shook his head with a look Daichi couldn't figure out, like he was the one missing something. So now it's just so awkward. I've resigned myself to hanging out with Oikawa most nights. Oikawa, Suga! You know how desperate I've been if I'm willing. I'm willingly hanging out with Oikawa. Suga laughed again as he gave Daichi's now empty coffee cup back to him. Standing up, Suga and Daichi threw away their trash as they left the small cafe on the campus and made their way to their only shared class. Here is what I think, Suga said, kicking a rock with his foot as they walked leisurely. I think that you're stuck in a very sucky situation, but maybe this is the universe's way of telling you to fix the relationship. Suga threw his hands up as a defence as he continued quickly, not even romantically. You guys had a pretty good friendship before all this, don't you miss it? Do I miss it? Daichi thought about how easy it was to get along with Koro before the breakup, and how much more fun his freshman year was with him. Damn it, why is Suga always right? Turning back to Suga to answer him, Daichi found himself several steps ahead of him. Suga, you good? Suga shook his head as if to shake the thought away, and smiled brightly at Daichi. I'm fine. Just thought I saw a neighbourhood kid I grew up with. Daichi grimaced as he thought about Suga's rich kid neighbourhood and the people he grew up around. Daichi would never say anything to him, but he was very glad Suga became friends with him instead of Futakuchi, or worse, Daisho. Speak of the devil. Sugawara Koshi, 
Fancy seeing you out here in the sun. Figured you would still be hiding in the closet. Daisho Suguru came slinking around the corner, and Daichi rolled his eyes as Fudakuchi and Terashima followed behind him. Daisho really wasn't a problem last year, but seeing as his two favourite underclassmen joined him, Daichi assumed he probably felt more powerful again. I noticed my texts weren't going through. Wimped out on that as well? Daichi could feel himself tense up as he moved in front of Suga almost instinctively, but stopped as Suga put his hand on his shoulder. Daisho snickered. What? Not using your attack dog this time? Willing himself to step back, Daichi was impressed at how Suga didn't seem tense at all going over to address the group. Daisho, nice seeing you again. I'm sorry you felt bad about me not texting back. But let's be honest, isn't it a little... fruity? To be waiting so desperately by your phone for another man to reply? Suga smirked as Fudakuchi held back a small snicker, and a smile of his own. And Kenji! Suga whipped around to face the other male. Daichi felt his smile grow as Suga turned more sinister. Last time I saw you, you were kissing your dad's ass to pay for a new car. Or were you kissing your daddy's ass? Fudakuchi's smile fell as he stuttered, mouth wide open. The whole scene had now gathered a group of students, some filming the showdown, as others just watched with rapid attention. I don't know what you're talking about, Sugawara, but I will have you no- No need for threats, Fudakuchi. Suga threw up his hands, making calm down motions as he smiled at the brown-haired man. Just repeating what I heard coming down from the grapevine, or in this case, what I heard from your pierced tongue friend over there. The crowd gasped and laughed as Terashima shook his head back and forth, almost comically. I haven't even talked to Suga since high school! Daichi watched as Suga narrowed his vision the smile never leaving his face, but his eyes moved in a calculating manner. Suga walked slowly over to Terashima as the rest of the crowd shifted to make them in the middle of the circle. Oh, Teru. Suga began circling around Terashima, running his hand over his shoulders as he made his way back to where he was facing. You can't tell me you don't remember that night. About three weeks ago, at your friend's house. Suga and Terashima were now facing each other, and even though Suga was facing the other way from Daichi, he knew Suga was wearing that fake pout he has when he wants something. Daichi watched Terashima's eyes grow wider as Suga put his arms around his neck, making the younger male's eyes twitch down to Suga's lips before making eye contact with him again. Terashima gulped audibly as Suga just stared back at him, tilting his head, faking innocence. Fudakuchi moved to get Suga off his friends, but Daichi watched as Daisho held him back. Taro isn't like you! Fudakuchi yelled, looking more confused than angry from the sidelines as Daisho increased the grip he had on his arm. Terashima, you can push him off you! You're way stronger than him! Suga didn't break eye contact from Terashima as he lifted his voice. I never said he was like me, Kenji. Suga let his arms down from Terashima's shoulders, but he had one of his hands move to his face, slowly moving his thumb across the younger's cheek in a soothing pattern, and Daichi watched with mild amusement at the fake blonde leaning slightly into his palm. I mean... We all know Teru here likes girls, too. Daichi shook his head as Suga moved his thumb to lightly pull at Terashima's bottom lip. But I think Terashima likes a lot more than just girls. Right, Teru? There it is. The killer punch. The courtyard was eerily quiet, as it felt like everyone and their dog held their breath. Finally... Terashima gulped, 
one last time as he finally let his shoulders relax, seemingly accepting his fate. Right, Terashima whispered. The courtyard roared. Daichi watched with awe while Suga whispered something to Terashima, making him blush as he pulled away from the shaken man, patting the blonde on the back. Daichi thought he could hear Suga say something along the lines of, Text me later. But to be honest, he couldn't hear much of anything as the crowd around him was rioting. Suga grabbed his hand and pulled him away from the chaos, laughing as he pushed his way around the swarming people. Looking over his shoulder, Daichi saw Daisho watching them leave with disdain, and Futakuchi looking torn as the snake-like man pulled him away from the blonde, who just barely seemed to realise what happened. Poor guy. Pulling Daichi around the corner, both of them plopped down on the ground unceremoniously as they tried to catch their breaths. Suga! Daichi gasped out as his lungs searched the air. Suga, where the hell did that come from? Suga looked up from the ground as Daichi smiled at what looked like pure sunshine in a person. I may have picked up some fake it to your make it tips from Oikawa. Daichi threw his head back onto the wall behind him as he let out a deep laugh. That, my best friend was one of the coolest things I have ever witnessed. Suga smiled at him as he punched his shoulder, letting a peaceful aura come around them as nothing but their breaths filled the air. Finally, Suga spoke again. You know what would be cooler than that, Dai? Daichi rolled his head over to look back at Suga. What? Getting along with your roommate. Sugawara Koshi! Read the room. Suga sat up straighter as he punched Daichi again. I am. And if I'm being honest, I'm beating you in the cool department by such a fair amount that I'm going to have to get a new cooler best friend soon if you don't step up. Daichi laughed again as he shook his head. You little shit! That doesn't make any sense! Suga stood up, brushing off his butt as he dramatically sighed at Daichi. Oh, the worry that I carry that I soon will lose my best friend because of how lame and uncool he is. Daichi rolled his eyes as Suga sighed again, resting his elbow on top of Daichi's head. If only there were an easy and normal way he could appear once again as cool as me in my eyes. And then we could stay the best buds we were meant to be. But alas! Suga wailed as Daichi tried to move his elbow that was now digging into his skull. He seems to ignore my voice of reason. And I'm afraid our friendship days are now numbered if he does not- Fine! Suga, I get it! Daichi gritted out finally getting the elbow off of him and leaping up from his sitting spot. Suga let out a yelp as Daichi threw him into a headlock, rubbing the top of his head with his knuckles. I'll try harder with Koro. Say uncle. Suga glared up at him. Fine, uncle! Daichi chuckled as he let go, watching as Suga tried to move his hair back into a normal place. You call me a little shit. But you're really what people need to look out for. Suga muttered, giving up on making his hair look a little less like he got lucky. Daichi rolled his eyes as he ran his shoulder into Suga's lightly, says the one who just roasted three homophobes in public. Suga shrugged, but flushed slightly under the praise as they started walking. Two homophobes, and a slightly confused pansexual if we're being honest. Suga looked off ahead of Daichi like he was considering something, before he spoke again. Actually, I have a feeling that today's encounter is going to make Futakuchi realise something too. Really? Daichi said sceptically, now realising that they were walking towards their apartment building instead of class. I guess we did miss class for that, huh? Suga shook his head as they made it to a crosswalk. Just a hunch. Don't think too much about it. Daichi smiled softly, 
as they crossed the street, passing Bokuto with a wave as he smiled back, but didn't try to speak as he was on the phone. So, you gonna meet with Terashima again? Suga flushed slightly. Only to give him some resources. I have a feeling that Daisho isn't going to want him hanging around, and I don't want to leave him hanging without connections. I mean, Teru told me at the party that he had told his parents, but didn't know how to tell his friends. I guess this was as good of an excuse as any. Suga froze as Daichi watched his face fall fast. Oh my god, Dai. Did I just force Terashima to come out of the closet? Daichi could feel his smile drop as Suga's breath picked up. Suga, you need to breathe. You didn't make Terashima do anything. You said it yourself that he was planning on telling his friends but didn't know how. Daichi reached out to grab Suga's shoulder, but froze as Suga flinched away. Suga, listen to me. You need to calm down and- Suga's head shot up as he looked at Daichi with slightly watery eyes. <laughs> you know what, Daichi? Suga said way too fast, stuttering his words as he backed up. Uh, I totally forgot about something I had to do, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go do that now. Daichi reached out to grab Suga's arm, but felt him yank it out of his grasp. Suga! You don't have to run every time! I'm here for you! Daichi called out as he watched his best friend disappear into the hordes of college students. Sighing as he turned back to face his apartment, Daichi ran into a solid body, Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking where I was going and I... Daichi Sawamura. Just the man I wanted to see. Daisho. Really? Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate all the support you've given me. This video took way too long to make due to college, but I promise I will get better at juggling college and recording. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. All credits go to the original creator of this fanfiction, DarkRain2610 on AO3. I would highly appreciate it if you gave this video a like, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit the notification bell to be notified of when I next upload. There is no pressure to do so though. Thank you for visiting my cosy corner of the internet. Keep growing my sunflowers. Mwah!